Ladies and gentlemen, Six Fig Stock Trader here from YouTube. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about ICP and what is going on with the price. Now, if you haven't already, hit up my video where I talk about how some of the exchanges, in my opinion, pulled one over on the ICP launch. I will go ahead and link that video at the end screen. So after this TA, you can go ahead and watch that video. Some very interesting stuff that basically debunks the whole rug pull narrative that all these people have been trying to push on the internet computer token. So let's go ahead and get into today's juice. So welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to smash that subscribe button, especially if you like ICP. Now, folks, I need all of your help. Let's see if we can get 50 likes on this video. It helps the algorithm. It helps get these videos in front of people viewing ICP content. Check me out on Twitter at Real6Fig because this is where I'm dropping little teasers like this. And we'll go in and explain what I meant about this falling wedge that is squeezing the ICP price. Also symmetrical triangle squeeze pattern. Noticed, we can see that there are some very important time sequences coming up for internet computer. And the last three time sequence have been 100% spot on. So what am I referring to when we talk about time sequence? This is Fibonacci time sequence. Basically, what we can do is measure Fibonacci time sequence by measuring a swing high to a swing low. Now, here is a perfect example of a great swing high to a great swing low. So you guys can see where this is placed and what does this give us? Well, this gives us the Fibonacci time sequence. You know, time is relevant to price, as we all know, through GAN's work. Um, this really does a great job at pr uh, predicting po potential reversal points in the future. And this is why it's so important to learn techniques like this. So the first time sequence, number two, was exactly spot on. We can see the top of the wick came right up here and to the day it predicted a reversal. Now, same with number three, the wick actually came down right to about here. So we had price, you know, crashing down and we pulled a nice little bit of a reversal. Uh, here's point five because point two plus point three equals five. And that's how the time sequence goes. Point three plus point five equals eight. And so that will be the next time sequence. But we can see how this time sequence perfectly predicted a reversal point here. And now we're looking for point eight, which is down here. And that is May 14th. Now we don't know what's going to happen with the prices for now, but I can speculate that we are kind of seeing this symmetrical triangle squeeze on the charts. And that is leading up to this time sequence. Now, when we start to see symmetrical triangle squeezes and things like that, it's very rare that we'll see anything squeeze to the very end of a pattern, especially when it comes to a symmetrical triangle. Usually it lops off like the last one fifth or the last quarter of the pattern formation. So this is very important to see this type of squeeze happen with this time sequence where it is. You guys have to understand that this is very important. So go into your phone's calendars, mark down May 14th. ICP might reverse. We might see some sort of increased volatility. And all this means is this could be a potential pivot point for price action to go up or down. In addition, this could, um, this could be on a very minor scale meaning we might see price, you know, maybe reverse like this or something like that. Or, you know, we might see price kind of linger down and reverse like this. We just don't know if it's going to be a significant reversal point like this or, you know, maybe something like this. It's just up in the air. Technical analysis only goes so far, but with the right people using it, 
there's there's definitely an edge over the average investor. So what we're going to go ahead and do here to support this theory of a symmetrical triangle squeeze, I think what I'm going to do is throw up a little bit of a GAN fan. And we're looking for that 45 degree angle. So there we go. Uh, let's just go ahead here and grab our GAN fan. And so we can see that price action is obeying this very bottom portion of this GAN fan. So if we start to see ICP really kind of float below this fan here, we'll know that, hey, things could be in trouble for price action. That's just the way it is, folks. Now, when it comes to trying to predict a possible you know, path, uh, we'll do that here as to where this price might actually go. So when we look at these falling wedges, there's a few things. There's a, there's a couple rules of thumb that you can apply to a falling wedge like this. Some people will go ahead and they will measure out this portion here down to this lower portion here towards the end of the, or the, the beginning of the falling wedge. And then they might place it somewhere along here, which would mean price might increase up to about $65-ish level, somewhere in there. I wanted to point out as well that on the weekly chart, we just got the 50 moving average available to even view on the weekly chart this week. So this is huge. Now it's going to take a few months before we get some sort of concrete line that we can really latch onto to try to figure out where price might go. But with the conversion line on the Ichimoku cloud, which we don't have an Ichimoku cloud on the weekly chart because this chart, ICP is too new of a token that we'll still need, you know, a, a, a while. You know, we probably won't get an Ichimoku cloud till somewhere in November uh, starting to form. But we can use our moving averages as guidance for right now. And what's interesting about this is that we will see uh, when we measure this point to this point, apply it down here on this time sequence, we can kind of see that this span goes perfectly up towards this 50 moving average. And so when we start to see this conversion line, which is this red line, if you're familiar with Ichimoku cloud trading, a lot of times the conversion line is blue, but I like to keep my, my baseline uh, blue because it just base blue. You guys kind of get that. Uh, so my conversion line is red. And when we start to see these conversion lines start trading parallel with each other, and we start to see you know, we see this conversion line and the baseline uh, trading parallel with each other. What I'm looking for is this conversion line to start arcing upwards. And what happens when that uh, conversion line starts arcing upwards? We see a very nice reaction in price. And I can illustrate this on the daily because this weekly just isn't uh, adequate with data. But here's an example. We see the conversion line starts arcing to the, the upside and price rips. So it's no coincidence, in my opinion, that when we measure out this falling wedge to this, uh, you know, and we apply this measurement down here, that it comes right up to this 50 moving average. So I do think that if things get real bullish for ICP, you better watch out because I think this thing has every chance to rip up to about the $63 uh, level, in my opinion. Not financial advice, folks. Technical analysis is great, but at the same time, uh, it's not concrete at all, like at all. You know, we can nail it down uh, a high percentage of the time, uh, but this stuff is so unpredictable. It's just a trading tool. Uh, so we do get we do get the 476, which is the upper echelons of a Fibonacci extension right up by this 50 moving average. You know, so we can kind of see what exactly is going on here. Now, we won't necessarily know when we will see price action reach these levels, if it even does, because we could be setting up to see ICP drift lower. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to tell the truth here. If this symmetrical triangle squeeze goes bearish, we will address that at that time, uh, but we will likely see 
you know, the 11, $10-ish range if that does happen. So keep that in mind. I don't want anybody FOMOing in. You got to do your own research. Okay. And with that said, uh, this, this falling wedge here is a very bullish pattern to be seen. And one thing that I like particularly about this setup is how small these Ichimoku clouds are, and it's going to be very easy for price action to kind of pass through them. So I'm hoping at the end of the day, what we see is maybe some sort of Elliott Wave theory move up to that 60-ish dollar level over the next month or two. Now, who, who knows how long it will take to get there, if we even do. You know, on the daily chart, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw price action come down around this $27, $28 level. Let's just pull up a Fibonacci extension. And you can see it's kind of right in between the 127 and 161.8, which is the golden ratio. Now, these are two very important levels, the 127 uh, and the 161.8 on extension and retracement levels. This 127 is the day trader's dream where they will sometimes flip, you know, a lot of day traders will flip their positions when a asset trades down to the 127 they will go ahead uh, flip their bear positions to bullish positions vice versa this works both ways so when we start to see uh you know the 127 161 8 those are, are good indicators that there's going to be some solid resistance or support around those levels so at the end of the day folks I think that ICP is really setting up quite nicely for a possible move to the upside. Uh, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me to see, you know, high 20s to, uh, you know, high 60s in the next few months. Hopefully, ICP is done retracing and hopefully Bitcoin is done really kind of messing around here. And let's just go ahead and pull up this Bitcoin chart uh, just for giggles. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff. But if we do get a nice little run of Bitcoin up to 48,000 in the last video, I was kind of speculating on how if we get rejected at the $48,000-ish level, uh, that there could be a possibility of this ascending triangle forming uh, to really uh, blast off on. So I'm hoping that is happening. We won't know. Uh, as far as, as anyone's concerned with Bitcoin at this point, Bitcoin could possibly be squeezing uh, into a symmetrical triangle as well. Uh, we just don't know until we figure out where this resistance is going to be. It's either going to be some sort of symmetrical triangle squeeze or some sort of ascending triangle, in my opinion. So there you have it, folks. That is my take on the crypto market, specifically ICP and Bitcoin right now. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check this video out at the end screen. Smash that like button if you like this content. I truly appreciate it. More than you guys know, it helps the algorithm. It helps get this video in front of other people that might be interested in ICP. So wishing you guys well. We'll see you guys all on the next video.